Hello students, Stride here again. Today we're going to look at notes for section 2.1 classify matter. Start with a little, little illustration involving laundry. You might see labels that say 100% cotton shirt. Might be cotton and polyester blend. And depending on what it's made of, cleaning instructions are going to be different. We classify matter into different categories such as pure substances. One of our key questions, why are elements and compounds classified as pure substances? Definition, pure substance, is matter that always has exactly the same composition. A couple common pure substances are table salt and table sugar. Pure substances are broken down into two categories, elements and compounds. Every sample of a given substance and when chemistry when they say substance are pure substance we're talking about exactly the same thing so every sample of a given substance has the same properties because a substance has a fixed uniform composition so key idea fixed uniform compositions and that's just why we call them pure substances because they do have this fixed uniform composition. Another key question is how do mixtures differ from pure substances? An element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. Element has a fixed composition because it's made of one type of atom. No two elements contain the same type of atom. And a lot of different things about elements. We got some that are solid at room temperatures, such as Many soft drink cans made from aluminum, carbon, what's in mixture marks and pencils. But then we have things like oxygen and nitrogen, two main two gases in the air we breathe. And two elements, liquid at room temperature, bromine and mercury. We've got symbols for elements, such as C for carbon, Al for aluminum, then you got some that are a little different, like Au for gold. Latin name for gold is Aram, and that's where the Au comes from. And one of the things we are going to be doing, we may have already started on this, is we're going to be memorizing names and symbols for elements. So you'll memorize things like C is carbon, AO is aluminum. And the symbols allow scientists who speak different languages to communicate without confusion. So nitrogen, which our symbol is N, matches up very nicely in our English language, but in France it's azot, stickstoff in Germany, and nitrogeno in Mexico. But all scientists use that same symbol, N. So some very common things we see all the time, gold, jewelry, aluminum, pop cans, carbon mentioned in pencil ad, and iodines used for preventing infections. Mm -hmm. 
compounds are made up of two or more simpler substances and can be broken down into these simpler substances. Compound, when there are key points here, compound will always contain two or more elements joined in a fixed proportion. Yeah, properties of a compound differ many times drastically from those of the elements it's made up of, such as water. Water is composed of elements hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen are gases at room temperature, water is a liquid. Hydrogen can fuel a fire, oxygen can keep a fire burning, but water does not burn or help other substances burn, so totally different properties. Some compounds, silicon dioxide, And so it's, made, it's what quartz is, and quartz is what makes up sand and many other various minerals. So, so you'll see it in rocks like granite, and this tremendous amount of rocks have silicon dioxide or quartz in it. And it's a colorless, transparent solid, shown here. Yet it's made up of colorless gas, oxygen, and a gray solid silicone. It always contains two oxygen atoms for every one silicon atom. And we have a formula for it, SiO2. Compounds will always have a formula. A couple quick questions. Which of these substances is a compound? Yeah. That would be water. Compound. Formula is H2O. Carbon. Element. Form symbol C. Oxygen. Element. Symbol O. Copper. Element with symbol Cu. Which of these could be used as a symbol for an element? A symbol for an element will always have one or two letters, the first of which is capitalized. And the only one that fits that is CM here. HF is a formula for a compound, hydrogen fluoride. CIR, this doesn't work at all. FE doesn't work at all. FE would work and it would be the symbol for iron if it was capital FE. And which of these following statements does not apply to a compound? Compounds are made of two or more elements. It is joined in fixed proportions. It can be broken down into elements or other compounds but it cannot be separated into components by physical methods. It has to be by chemical methods. So C is our answer. Then we move into mixtures and back to that key question, how do mixtures differ from pure substances? So salsa Got a whole bunch of different stuff. We got a recipe to make up salsa. And anybody that's making up salsa, even following this recipe, it may be just slightly different. And the properties of a mixture can vary because the composition is not fixed. Yeah. Pure substances, composition's fixed. Mixtures, it's not. Mixtures retain some of the properties of the individual substances. 
Properties of mixture are less consistent than the properties of a substance. We got a couple different kinds of mixtures, heterogeneous and homogeneous. Heterogeneous mixture, parts of the mixture are noticeably different from one another. Typically you can see these different parts. Homogeneous, they're harder to see. It's difficult to distinguish one substance in a mixture from another. The salsa mixture we just talked about. Typically going to be heterogeneous. You can still see tomatoes in it. You still may see peppers in it. You can see a lot of different pieces of onion. Whatever might be in it. Sand is a heterogeneous mixture of different kinds of grains. Yet this so sand heterogeneous and you can see illustration here looking at it. You can see different parts in it. It's made up of different kind of things. Some of which was that silicon dioxide of course we talked about. But you got lots of different things in it. The spoon, stainless steel, a homogeneous mixture of iron, chromium, and nickel. So, spoon, everything in it looks the same. It almost looks like a pure substance, but it's still a mixture. Uh, here we run through a little bit of some questions involving mixtures. And according to the FDA, a can label mixed nuts must contain at least four types of shelled nuts other than peanuts. The mass of each type of nut must not be less than 2% of the total mass and not more than 80% of the total mass. So some guidelines to make it mixed nuts. And here we got some questions. How are the two brands of mixed nuts alike? How are they different? Obviously they're alike. They contain the same. They're alike. They all contain the same type of nuts, but they're different in the amount they contain. So, answer, both contain the same types of nuts, but in different amounts. And what is the percent by mass of each type of nut in the can? And here I'll just give you, there's the answers, but I'm going to back up to here. Quick demonstration of how you're going to do, how you would do that. First thing we'd have to do is add up, get the total for the brand A. We get the total for brand B and then to get the like the percent for percent of peanuts peanuts you'd take the 152.39 divided by the total amount and then it had to multiply it by 100 to get a percent. And we repeat that with each one, and we do get these values here. So there's 44.2% peanuts, 13.64% almonds, and the rest of them. And do the contents meet FDA regulations? So we'll back up and look at those amounts again. There we go. And said they had to be at least 2%, no more than 80%. And you can see they're all between 2 and 80. And they had to contain at least four things besides peanuts. And we got one, two, three, four, five. So we got those. And they're all within right ranges. So yes, they do. They contain more than four types of nuts other than peanuts, and the mass is within the 2 to 80% range. Yeah. And then they say the masses are listed in this order, peanuts, Brazil nuts, almonds, cashews, pecans, and hazelnuts. What do you think determines the order? And 
order is determined by the largest mass first. So order of mass. And then we break down mixtures into some different categories. Also, besides heterogeneous and homogeneous, we talk about solutions, suspensions, and colloids. And these are based on the size of the particles. So, key point, based on the size of its largest particles, mixture can be classified as solution, a suspension, or a colloid. When substances dissolve and form in a homogeneous mixture, we call that a solution. So homogeneous mixture and a solution, same thing. And a suspension is heterogeneous mixture and it'll separate into layers over time. Then a colloid's kind of in between the two. Colloid particles that are intermediate in size between the small particles in the solution and the larger particles in a suspension. Like solutions, colloids do not separate. And you can't use a filter to separate the particles of a colloid. You can use a filter to separate the particles of a solution. Can't for a colloid, can't for a solution. And a colloid is also determined to be heterogeneous. That's heterogeneous. So, windshield wiper fluid solution. Solutions, another way you can tell it, they also tend to be clear in nature. You can kind of see through them. Where colloids and suspensions are more cloudy in nature, more difficult to see through, like muddy water, a suspension. And then the muddy water will separate out. Milk, a colloid, kind of cloudy, but doesn't separate out. And more questions. How does a compound differ from a mixture? And a compound is made up of two or more elements in fixed proportions. Looking at some of the other choices and why they're wrong, it's just composition of a mixture cannot vary. Composition of a mixture can vary. Composition of a compound does not vary. Compounds can be separated by physical properties. Mixtures cannot. That one's backwards. Mixtures can be separated by physical properties, and compounds can't. A compound cannot be broken down into simple substances. And it can be. It has to use chemical methods to do it, but it can always be broken down into simpler substances, such as its elements. And which is a heterogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous you can usually kind of see differences in it and you see sand heterogeneous mixture you look at sand you can see different kinds of things in it air it would be considered homogeneous samples of air are going to be the same no matter where you take them seawater typically going to be considered homogeneous mixture Steel, homogeneous mixture. So the other ones are all homogeneous mixtures. And which is falling can be separated with a filter. And that would be a suspension. Others cannot. So that's our notes for section 2.1. As always, make sure you're taking some good notes. Get to use them on your quiz. Great learning tool. So until next time, this is Strike.